Welcome to Cisco Training Videos. My name is Trevor. The topic for this video is user interface modes on the Cisco ASA firewall. This video is primarily targeted for people who have never logged into a firewall and would like to get more comfortable navigating through the iOS and the different command line interface prompts. This is also going to explain how to make configuration changes to the firewall's running config. If this is your first training video with me, you're in for a treat. This is going to be a lot of fun. This video is going to go in-depth into the different user interface modes of the Cisco ASA firewall. Let's begin. The Cisco ASA user interface consists of several modes. Each mode has a different function and allows a limited set of commands that can be issued to provide administrative capabilities in that mode. What that essentially means is that you can only issue certain commands in certain user interface modes, and you can only get into those modes if you're authorized and have a login password. At this point, I would like you to look at the model I wrote up. This is displaying the three different user interface modes of the Cisco ASA. So let's start at the beginning. By default, the Cisco ASA places all initial access to the firewall in user exec mode. User exec mode is the lowest authorized mode for a firewall, and you will immediately know that you're in this mode because you can't issue a single useful command. You can ping things, you can trace route the things, and you can issue enable so you can get out of this mode. <laughs> Again, no matter how you are connected to the firewall, whether it's through an SSH or Telnet session, or through a console connection, the Cisco IOS will place you in user exec mode for security reasons. In order to go up a level and get into privilege mode, like I said, you will need to issue the command enable and then issue your authentication password. All right, here's an SSH connection to a firewall. Currently we are in user exec mode. I just wanted to give you an example of what it looks like. If I press question mark, you can see all the available commands that you can issue. Next is privilege exec mode. Privilege exec mode is where all the fun stuff actually starts to happen on the firewall. You have the ability to view the entire running configuration, or you can look at separate individual sections of the running config by issuing more direct commands. You have the ability to also look at the log so that it can help you troubleshoot certain types of events. You can look at the system performance specs like CPU utilization or the firewall's connection table and actually shun IP addresses. You can issue a packet tracer command so that you can simulate a packet and document how it goes through the different phases of the packet inspection process. And honestly, so much more. If you would like to have a complete documented list of all the available options, go ahead and type a question mark and press enter from this mode. All right, here's our firewall. Notice I typed enable to get out of user exec mode and to enter privilege exec mode. Also, I want you to notice that the prompt changed. Instead of having the greater than sign, I now have a, a number sign next to my prompt. This is one of those quick indications you can look at to see what user interface mode you're in. So if I press the question mark, you can see all the available options you can configure in user exec mode. And it is, no doubt, way more options. I'll talk about all of these in more upcoming videos. Okay, so after looking at the output of your question mark command when you're in privileged exec mode, you may be wondering, how do I actually configure and update something in the running config? Because I'm not seeing any of those options. And the answer is simple. You just need to go up another mode. The next user interface mode is called global configuration mode. You can get into global configuration mode by issuing the command configure terminal, or confT for short, from the privilege level mode. Once you press enter, you're immediately in global configuration mode. From global configuration mode, you have the ability to issue firewall commands so that you can make certain features available on your operating system, or so you can configure physical interfaces on your firewall. Let's say, for example, you wanted to configure the firewall banner feature on your device. You would need to be in global configuration mode so that you could issue the banner MOTD commands. If you tried to issue those banner MOTD configurations from the privilege level or user exec modes, the command would error out because the commands are not valid for those user interfaces. Let me give you an example. Right here, if I wanted to configure a banner, the command syntax is banner MOTD, and then you put your banner in between two delineators. However, if I was in a different mode and I tried to issue the same command, banner MOTD, it just says invalid input detected. The reason why it did that is because I'm in the wrong mode. I need to be in global configuration mode in order to update the running configuration. One last feature I would like to add is the ability to go into a lower user interface. So far I've only talked about how to escalate your level 
and go up, but how exactly would you go down? The answer to the question is really simple. You use either one of the following commands, exit or end, or you can press control Z, and that will take you all the way back down to the privilege level command. If you use the exit command, it will take you down one level. And if you use the end command, it does exactly what control Z did, and it takes you straight back to privilege level mode, no matter how far into global configuration mode you are. Now you may be wondering, well, wait a second, hold on, why do I ever need to go down in level? Why would I want to de-escalate my privileges? And the answer to that is, certain commands need to be issued in certain modes. And as you get more familiar with the Cisco IOS, you'll experience that, and you'll see situations where you need to issue certain commands in privilege level mode, and you need to issue certain commands in global configuration mode. Well, I hope all that made sense. I know we covered a lot, especially for some people who may have never even been in a firewall before. Hopefully now the Cisco ASA user interface modes are more clear to you. Please leave any questions or comments you have in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. And you will definitely immediately know that you... Ah, I can't do this! <laughs>